Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition, and in this video, I want to show you beginners how to increase your punching power. And remember that this will be for beginners. So if your name happens to be Tyson or Joshua, well then maybe this isn't for you. And I thank you anyway for watching. But if you're a beginner and looking to get a little more pop into your punch, then this video is gonna show you everything that you need to know. And if you watch this video until the end, then you're gonna learn a few pointers that you can use to increase your punching power today and not weeks or years from now. And so here we go. But before we start, let's go over a few things. First and foremost, let's take a look at the biomechanics of the punch. And this is a good place to start because using proper biomechanics can really help you increase the leverage on your punches and thus help you deliver punches with more power. I've seen other videos and people trying to tell you that you need to buy this or that equipment or take such and such a supplement or buy their particular training program. Or some people will show you the most ridiculous exercises that have actually nothing to do with increasing your punching power. And as always, I like to keep everything simple yet effective. And most often, if a beginner makes some simple tweaks to their technique, well, then they can send their punching power through the roof almost instantly. The biggest thing that you will notice is that most guys who have never boxed before use mostly their arms to punch. And although the movement of the arm looks like it might deliver a powerful punch, there really isn't too much behind those arm punches at all. Oh, and you may be wondering why I'm dressed like this. Well, that's simply so that you can see my limbs with the contrast against the white background. And so I may look a little geeky with my knees all duct taped, but I'm a geek who can punch hard and so I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, let's move on. Now you may be saying to yourself, of course he's not punching hard, he's standing all square. But even when many beginners assume a proper boxing stance, they still throw arm punches like this. Often beginners are not using their entire body to throw the punch, and they're going to be surprised to know that the real punching power actually comes from the legs. Yep, the legs, and not a big chest or biceps, but the legs. And if you don't believe me, well then you can try this little experiment for yourself. Have a seat in a chair and try throwing some punches. Or even a better analogy, try throwing a ball like this one. That way you can easily quantify your results by noticing how far the ball travels. So simply have a seat in a chair and see how much power you can generate and how far you can throw that ball and then just take a look at the distance that the ball traveled then compare that with the distance you can throw the ball from a standing position where you can actually use your legs and you're going to recognize right off the bat part in the pun that major league pitchers put their entire body into throwing that ball and that's why it's able to travel so much further. And that will work the same for other sports as well, like football, tennis, or whatever. And boxing is really no different. You want to use your entire body to generate as much force as possible. So let me repeat that because that's precisely what we're looking to accomplish. We want to use our entire body to generate as much force, yes, force, as possible. And if you've watched any of my videos, then you'll notice that I always like to address the question of why. Why do things work the way that they do? And some of you may be like, oh my god, Mike, enough with the math and physics already. But knowing why things work the way that they do will help you understand why what I'm about to show you actually works. And so we are looking to generate more force. F is equal to MA, so that's force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. So what that means for us is that we can increase our force by either increasing our mass or the acceleration of our punch or both. Yet there must be a proper balance that must be struck because you don't want to sacrifice one for the other. And perhaps that doesn't make too much sense to you, but this is what I mean. I've boxed guys that were massive, like 300 pounds solid, but they didn't necessarily punch all that hard, where I would spar someone like light heavyweight champion Adonis Stevenson, and when he hit you, you felt like you got struck with lightning, even though he's only 175 pounds. And that's because he generates his force due to great acceleration. So the point I need to convey to you is that sure, force is equal to mass. Sure, mass but it's multiplied by acceleration. And so it's not simply all about mass. So don't get me wrong, mass is part of the equation. And so maybe your girlfriend lied to you because size does matter, but it's not the only component here because you also need to be able to use that extra size. And to illustrate the fact that it's not all about size, I will take two pieces of wood. Both are the same type of wood and the same shape. Now I could have used a baseball bat for the second piece of wood, but basically I wanted them to be the same so that no one would bother me about the aerodynamics or whatever. So I have a four by four piece and a one by one piece of equal length. Now these two pieces of wood are the same length and made of the same material, but the four by four has significantly more mass. The only problem here is that it has so much mass that I can't achieve a high rate of acceleration. So now I have these two pieces of wood and which one would you rather I hit you with? Well, it sounds counterintuitive, 
but I'd rather actually get hit with a 4x4 because it will feel more like a hard push simply because I don't have enough strength to achieve a high rate of acceleration. But if you hit me with that 1x1, one one, well then you're going to really hurt me, even though it's a smaller piece of wood. And that's because you can achieve a much higher rate of acceleration. And when it hits its target, it's actually going to hit with more force even though it has significantly less mass. So I'm looking to generate a great amount of force and then apply that force over time. And so that's force over time so that my fist has a great amount of momentum when it hits the target. And now this is where it gets a little interesting because momentum is a vector quantity. And that means that it also has direction. And this is a common problem that beginners have. And notice here, that the punch is not traveling in line with the mass of my body. So punching like this, I'm not hitting with as much momentum as I would be if I had all of my mass heading towards the target in the exact same direction like so. Where here, my fist, elbow, shoulder, core, and legs are all heading in a straight line towards my intended victim. I'm sure that you've heard that boxing is the sweet science. And what we are looking to do when we throw punches is to ensure that we can achieve maximal acceleration all while pointing our mass directly towards the target so that our fist can achieve the greatest possible momentum when it gets there. <laughs> oh yeah, and we want to do all of that while we limit our exposure to being countered. And so for you beginners, let's just do a quick review of your technique before we jump to some simple exercises to help you improve your power. Because like I said, there may be some simple tweaks that you can implement that will improve your punching power today by helping you increase the acceleration of your punches or by helping you direct as much mass into them as possible. Okay, so let's take a look at the biomechanics for the jab. And I'm not gonna go into super detail for all these punches, as this video is already getting to be a little long. But if you're interested, I'll leave links in the description below to videos that will explain punching technique in greater detail. But for now, let's move on to the jab. And the jab is not really meant to be a powerful punch. You could throw a much harder jab using footwork, but for the most part, the power of the jab is gonna come from a slight rotation of your legs hips and core. The most common thing that I see is that many beginners throw their jab using only their arm like so, with the elbow kicked out to the side. And doing this, you no longer have all of your mass behind your jab. And thus my jab won't be all that powerful. So the first tip is to keep your elbow in as close to your core as possible to ensure that you have all of your momentum traveling in the exact same direction towards your target. It's not always feasible to keep your elbow all the way in, but try to keep it in as much as you possibly can. And you're gonna notice here when we zoom in that the end result sees my fist, wrist, elbow, shoulder, and core all in line towards my target. The power for a jab thrown in place starts with your feet, and I'm using my rear foot to push off of the floor to cause a rotation of my lead hip and core. And that rotation of my hips and core will generate the power for my jab. You will also notice for the most part that I keep my rear heel up. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One, it's gonna help increase my mobility if I need to move. And two, it makes it much easier to push off the floor with my rear foot. And it also gives me a little greater range of motion for my hip rotation. And remember, that's the key here. I wanna use my legs, hips, and core to generate force for the jab. I also wanna simultaneously limit my wrist to exposure. And so I keep my rear hand up nice and high for defense. And it's not in front of my face blocking my vision. The jab is a straight punch that travels straight out and straight back. Finally, let's take a look from the other side, where you're gonna see that I generate the force for my jab by using my feet, then legs, hips, and core. I transfer that force to the target as I keep my shoulder, elbow, wrist, and fist in a straight line. And as I do that, I also want to ensure that my shoulder comes up high enough to protect my chin as my punch travels out there. And that's kind of important because, oh my God, I can't tell you how many people have commented on a few videos where they see my hand comes down a little after the jab. But these guys have never really boxed before. And some of the greatest boxers ever, like Mayweather, Jones, or Ali, for example, all have their lead jab hand low. So it's not so much the hand position, but the shoulder position that's crucial. And that is the true key, that the lead shoulder must come up high enough to protect their face as they jab. So long story short, make sure that that shoulder comes up high enough to protect your chin as you throw your jab out there. Next, let's take a look at the cross really quick. Once again, the biggest problem that beginners have is they let their elbow kick out to the side like so, and that just destroys all the momentum of their punch. And so just like the jab, you wanna keep that elbow in as close to your core as possible. The power for the cross comes from using your rear foot to drive against the floor, causing your body to rotate your legs, hips, and core 
to drive that rear hand across your body right into the target. Once again, note that the elbow isn't high and away from my body, but it stays in relatively close. And the end result again sees all of my momentum traveling in a straight line towards the target. Think back to throwing the ball. And this is gonna work kind of the same way. You wanna use your feet to push off the floor, using that rear foot to help generate force to rotate your hips and core. That's where all the power is gonna come from. It's all about using your feet to shift your weight from the rear leg to the lead leg. So you push off of the floor using your rear foot and then rotate your hips and core. And you wanna continue that rotation by extending out your rear arm straight across the body towards the target. And to the best of your ability, you wanna keep your shoulder, elbow, wrist, and fist traveling in a straight line in the same direction towards your target to maximize the momentum of your punch. A thing to note once again is that of course we wanna punch with power, but we also wanna limit our exposure to getting hit with power. And again, this is a crucial concept that when I throw my cross, that my shoulder must come up high enough to protect my chin so that I don't get caught while trying to deliver my powerful punches. And you're gonna see here as we zoom back out that just like a baseball pitcher or a football quarterback, we are using our entire body to throw the punch to maximize our power. And we're simply not just using our arm. So it's the whole body that's doing the work. Next, let's take a look at the lead hook. And I know I sound like a broken record, but once again, many beginners simply throw the hook using only their arm like so. But in this video, we wanna take your punching power to another level. And so you're gonna notice here that when I throw the hook correctly, that my arm really doesn't even move all that much. It's actually the rotation of my lead leg and core that does most of the movement. I may add a little extra movement at the end of my hook, but again, most of that movement is done with the legs, hips, and core. And it's gonna work pretty much the exact same way if I throw a lead hook to the body. I use my legs to accelerate my body to generate force for my punch. The more that I can use my feet and legs to accelerate the rotation of my hips and core, the more powerful my hook is gonna become. And then I'll continue that acceleration as I drive my fist in towards the target. And I'm gonna keep my elbow bent at about 90 degrees, give or take. So let's zoom out here to the side view, where once again, I use the rotation of my lead foot, legs, and hip to rotate my core, driving my punch into the target. A good visual, if you like, is to think that you're squashing out a cigarette butt on the floor with your lead foot. To the head or the body, the concept will remain roughly the same. And once again here, for either punch, you're gonna wanna keep your rear hand up for defense. And also a final note is that you need to ensure that that lead shoulder comes up high enough to protect your chin as you throw your hooks with power. Let's quickly move on to the rear hook. And yet again, most people simply use their arms to throw punches that may look like haymakers, but they're really not all that hard. Just like the lead hook, you wanna use your legs and hips to rotate your core, and that there really isn't all that much movement from my rear arm. The power for the rear hook starts with the rear foot, which I use to push off the floor to rotate my rear leg, hip, and core, and then finally the arm in towards the target. To the head or the body, again, the principle is the same. It's the whole body that throws the shot. The take home message once again is that for a powerful hook, it starts with your feet and your rear foot is used to initiate the rotation of your rear leg and hip. And it's that explosive rotation of your legs and hips and core that are used to really accelerate that rear arm. You then open up that rear arm and extend out that elbow joint to about 90 degrees and continue that acceleration of your punch right into the target. As you throw your rear hook, the lead hand must remain nice and high to protect your head. And just as we did with the other punches, the rear shoulder must come up high enough to protect your chin as you throw your shots. Once again, if you're interested in how to learn these punches in greater detail, including how to throw the uppercuts, I'll leave links in the description below. But this video is getting a little long, so let's move on, shall we? Next, to throw hard punches, well, mm, you need to have enough flexibility to comfortably complete the full range of motion of the punch. And that's where a lot of muscle-bound bodybuilder types get in trouble because they're not flexible enough and they end up throwing a few hard punches and end up tearing a bicep tendon or a pec or something. Also, you don't want the antagonist muscles being so tight that they slow down your acceleration. And so long story short, if you wanna throw hard punches, then first and foremost, you need to be able to complete the full range of motion of that particular punch. Because if your muscles are fighting each other, then that's gonna limit your acceleration and you're also gonna get injured. A quick review thus far, so that we can put it all together into a simple workout that you can use to increase your punching power today. So we're looking to increase the force of your punch, and we can do that by increasing our mass, our acceleration, or both. 
and I will do another video all about strength and conditioning for boxing, as that is my specialty, where we can focus on increasing your strength and your lean muscle mass of the muscles involved in punching. But those adaptations are going to take some time. And so let's move on to improving your punching power today. So we said that we can increase your actual mass, but like I said, that's going to take some time. But right now we can use proper technique to help you direct as much of the mass that you currently have into the direction of your punch to increase its momentum. We can also focus on increasing the acceleration of that mass by using the entire body to throw the punch and not simply your arms. And now that we have reviewed some basic technique for throwing the punches, that's exactly what we will focus our little workout on. And that is increasing the acceleration of your punch to increase the force of that punch, thus upping its momentum and impact when it actually hits the target. And thus we will start off our power punching workout with a couple of simple stretches to help increase our flexibility so that we don't get injured for one and two that we're flexible enough that we can complete the full range of motion of that punch without our antagonist muscles slowing down our acceleration. So I will start by actively stretching the muscles of my core by going through the motion of rotation that I'm going to use during my punching. And if you have one available, you can use an exercise ball if you like to help you with the stretch. And I'm going to do 20 full rotations to each side. Next, I'm going to hold this lunge stretch that sees me rotating my core towards the outside of my lead leg. And I'm going to hold this stretch for 45 seconds each leg. And I'm going to stick with these two simple stretches and move on. But you could also add some stretches for your biceps, triceps, and chest if you find that those areas are tight for you. Next, I'm going to warm up with some shadow boxing. And before I start, I'm going to ensure that I properly wrap my hands. And if you're not sure how to do that, then I'm going to leave a link in the description below. We will start out with two rounds of shadow boxing. And I'm sorry if this video looks a little dark. I shot this at night and I definitely should have used some better lighting. So for that, guys, I'm sorry. But you're going to be able to see what I'm doing and that's what counts, I guess. So anyway, let's move on. I'm going to start off the first minute of shadow boxing with some light movement. And then as I warm up, I'll throw some punches and I'm simply going to keep moving for these first two opening rounds. After two rounds, I'm gonna grab some weights and I'm gonna use five pound dumbbells and I weigh about 200 pounds. But if you're lighter than I, then perhaps use two pound dumbbells. You don't need to use heavy weights for this. So for most of you, two pound dumbbells will probably do just fine. And what I will do for the next two rounds is exactly what I did for the first two. I will begin with some movement and then I'm gonna throw some punches for two rounds straight. And I'm just looking to keep those hands moving while I'm holding on to the weights. And maybe you've seen guys holding weights before and you think big deal this is nothing new but the reason why i'm going to do this will become apparent in a moment i'm not really looking to build any muscle or endurance by holding these weights although it will definitely help for that as well what i'm actually looking to do is make some neurological adaptations here and i'll use another sport as an example i'm sure you've all seen baseball players where the batter is on deck and he's using a weighted bat right before he steps up to the plate well, I'm kind of doing the same thing here. I'm using these weights not so much for my muscles, but for my central nervous system. And you're going to see why. But for now, just notice that I did two rounds of shadow boxing using some dumbbells. Next, for the final two rounds of shadow boxing, I'm going to drop the weight. And now my brain and central nervous system has gotten used to throwing five pound punches. And they've compensated for that. And now without the weight, just like that weighted baseball bat in baseball, my acceleration and the velocity of my punches has increased and my hands seem like they're just flying. And that is exactly what I'm after. I want my brain to get used to throwing these punches now with extra speed. And I'm simply going to let my hands go for two rounds. So for two rounds, you just let those hands fly. After that, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes of this workout strengthening some muscles involved in punching. And I like to do that after the shadow when my muscles are all warmed up. And what I will do is use an exercise ball. And I use that because it's harder to stabilize. And I'm going to push against it on the side of this power rack. But you can do the exact same thing with a pillow or a towel against the wall or whatever you have near you. And what I'm going to do is put myself at the halfway point of my jab. So not fully extended where my joints are all locked out, but only at the halfway point of the motion. And I'm going to force into that exercise ball and hold an isometric contraction. And that's going to work most of the muscles involved in my jab. And I'm going to hold that contraction for 30 seconds. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the cross. Just get myself into the halfway position and push with all my might into that ball. And like I said, I'm using the ball because it adds an extra element of stabilization. But again, you use whatever you have with you. And that could be a pillow or a towel or whatever you have. And then just simply push into a wall. And then simply force as hard as you can with an isometric contraction 
for 30 seconds. Then the same thing with the lead hook. Just really flex those muscles of your core. Hold that for 30 seconds. Then I lower my arm for a lead body shot and I'll hold that isometric contraction for 30 seconds as well. Finally, I'll switch over to a rear hook to the head for 30 seconds, and then finish off with a rear hook to the body for 30 seconds. And now my muscles have been contracting and forcing, but they weren't allowed to fly out there due to the resistance from the ball. And now I'm gonna let them fly using the heavy bag. Frazier would say that there are no magic wands on fight night, and that you're gonna fight the exact same way that you train. It's not all of a sudden gonna magically appear on fight night if you never practice it in training. And so in order to improve your punching power, well, mm, you're actually going to have to throw some powerful punches. So let's move on to the heavy bag where you can throw some power shots. And before we begin, always safety first. And once again, please make sure that you properly wrap your hands. And you should definitely also be using some gloves. Next, you want to punch the bag and not slap it. Remember that you want to make contact with your knuckles and not the palm of your hand. A lot of guys think that they're punching hard if they send the bag flying around. But seriously, you don't want the bag flying like this. Making the bag flying all over the place is not helping you at all. And now even if you're punching properly, you still want to control the bag. I'm 200 pounds and this bag is only half my weight. And of course I could send it flying all over the place, but that's going to really slow down the pace of my workout because I'm going to be constantly chasing the bag to reset it. So long story short, try and control the bag. Finally, you want to snap your punches. And I mean to bring them right back to the start position as fast as you threw them out there. And I've had a couple of people ask me about this and so I'll quickly go over it again. Many people have a tendency to really push their fist into the bag when they try and punch hard. The problem then when they keep their wrist there is that that wrist absorbs all the impact and it may collapse. Ouch. So instead you're going to want to save your hands and wrist by snapping your punches. And instead of continually pushing forward into the bag with your punch, the moment that I make contact with the bag with my punch, I basically bounce it or ricochet it off of the bag and return it to the start position as fast as possible. Now that's going to give you the ability to quickly throw another punch and defend if you have to. But snapping my punches is also going to ensure that my wrist does not absorb all of that impact. And I'll leave a link to Heavy Bag Basics in the description below just in case you want to review that concept in greater detail. But by snapping your punches, you're going to keep your wrists and hands safe and ready for your next workout. Now on to our power punching bag workout. And we're going to throw 50 of each punch with power on the heavy bag. And we will start with the jab. And as we throw the jab, remember we want to throw them one at a time. And we're looking to keep as much mass behind our jab as possible. And so for the most part, I'm looking to keep my elbow in and not kicked up higher out to the side. Remember that the power of the jab is going to come from a slight rotation of your hips and core. I'm also looking to exhale with each punch as I throw it. That will help keep my breathing regular and it will also help me exert force as I contract those muscles of my core. And it helps keep those muscles flexed as I punch so that I can better take a body shot if I happen to get countered while my jab is out there. So I'm breathing out with every punch that I throw. And for this little workout, I'm going to try and throw 50 hard jabs in a row. So I throw one, I reset, and then I throw another. Next, I'm going to throw the cross. And again, I'm looking to throw 50 crosses in a row. The cross is the hardest punch that you can throw. And so throw one, reset, and then throw another. Try and throw each one as hard as you can. And as you throw them, remember once again to try and throw them as straight as you can to keep as much momentum heading in the same direction as possible. And for most of you, that's going to mean to keep that elbow in as much as possible. Remember that the power for the cross comes from the rotation of your core, and that starts with your feet. Just like throwing a ball, you want to use your entire body to throw your cross, where you shift your weight from your rear foot to your lead foot as you rotate your core. Once again, I'm exhaling as I throw each shot. Throw 50 in a row, one at a time, and reset yourself between each punch. Next, I will move on with 50 lead hooks. And the first 25 I'm going to throw to the body. Throw, then reset, and then throw again. Remember that it's the rotation of your core that's used to accelerate your punch. Try and throw each one as hard as you can and don't forget to breathe. I'll throw another 25 lead hooks, but this time I'm going to aim them a little higher up towards the head. The principle remains the exact same as I'm trying to throw each one as hard as I can, using my legs and core to rotate and accelerate my lead arm. 
the faster that you can use your core to accelerate that punch, the more power that your lead hook is going to have. Finally, we're going to finish off with 50 rear hooks, where I will throw the first 25 to the body. I keep saying it, but I want to use my legs and core to accelerate that punch. Throw them as hard as you can one at a time, and remember to reset yourself between each punch. Finally, I'll finish off with 25 rear hooks to the head. Don't forget to keep breathing and exhale with every punch that you throw. Remember to keep throwing these punches as fast and as hard as you can. Of course it's tiring, but it's supposed to be. Remember that the only way to really increase your punching power is to actually throw some punches with all of your might. If you're in great shape, then you might want to throw 75 of each punch to really get those muscles firing. And in the future, I'm definitely going to do a video all about strength and conditioning for boxing that's going to focus on increasing your strength and your muscle mass, especially for those legs. But remember again that mass is only part of the equation, and you can use routines like this one to help accelerate your punch, which will also increase your punching power. And for all of you beginners looking to increase your punching power quickly, well then the true key lies in focusing on proper technique to increase the leverage of the shot and by actually throwing punches with power at least once a week. So do that, focus on your technique and on your acceleration, and then sit back and watch your punching power increase dramatically. This has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition, and if you like these videos, then please click below to like and subscribe, as we're constantly posting up great tips and new ideas that are meant to get you into the absolute greatest shape possible.